Okay, everyone, welcome back to Premier Study. It's good to see you. Today, we're going to be looking, as you can see on the screen, Arbitus Biofarm Corp. They're a microcap company, and you can see on the screen the year to date stock performance. If we look over here to the right, 82 cents up to $9.02 high. Missed by a penny on the most recent quarter earnings, and today trading at $2.62. They made. They made some big news today, as you can see here, they're basically focused on hepatitis B. Let's check out these results there in the news with uh, Moderna. This is Moderna loses challenge to Artibus patent on vaccine technology. So the long and the short of it is, is basically Moderna was using something that Arbutus owned, licensed to somebody else who then licensed it to Moderna. It's a really important part of their vaccine delivery, their RNA vaccine delivery, Moderna's vaccine delivery that is. And so there's been a lot of talk. What does it mean? Is Arbutus going to be you know, able to basically make claims to any mm, any revenues that would come from a possible future Moderna vaccine? So big shout out to these two because they're going to put together a sweet graph for us. Jacob Polif and Edwin Elmhurst. Very, very cool. I'll leave this on the screen for you guys because it's a nice breakdown. You can see how all these people have kind of sold rights percentages of rights to this uh, patent, but Arbutus starts, there's a licensing thing that they do with this company here, who then sub license it to both Moderna and CureVac, which is really interesting because this is the uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk company over in Germany that, I mean, just had their IPO earlier this year. So they're very young, but they've got some big names behind them. And then of course, everyone how could you miss Moderna? So the point is, is there was this ruling right here. You can see the IPR ruled in Arbutus's favor on this branch right here. Now, interestingly enough, there's also this other patent assigned to this company called Genevent, which I think Arbutus has, yes, a 40% stake, if I remember in the reading correctly. But there's this other company over here, Royvant, that has a 60% stake. Anyway, they sub-licensed it to BioNTech, which of course we all know has this deal with Pfizer on, on their kind of collaboration movement that they have going on for the Pfizer drug. So the plot thickens, does it not? It is very interesting. Let me switch over here and read this real quick. It explains to us what's basically going on. It says, Arbutus Biofarm for some years owned rights to a technology that can be used to deliver messenger RNA to patient cells. Back in January of 2011, Moderna, whose entire drug platform is based upon messenger RNA, filed a, pe a petition with the U.S. Patent Office to have the small biotech firm's drug delivery patent declared invalid. Instead, on Thursday, the agency's patent and trial and appeal board ruled in Arbutus's favor. So... The ruling is important is Moderna's Rona vaccine candidate uses technology that covered that's covered by this patent. The experimental vaccines that the company is developing uses mRNA to issue instructions to the body cells to start manufacturing proteins that will trigger an immune response. But a major issue with this method is the matter of treatment delivery, how to get these instructions into the body cells. Several years ago, Moderna licensed its delivery technology, the use of lipid nanoparticles, from a small Canadian company called uh, Assiduous. And you can see that right underneath uh, Arbutus in this main diagram we're looking at. That company, Acuitas, it turns out had licensed it te its technology from Arbutus Biofarm and did not have the rights to sub-license it. So that's what this whole thing was about. So the CEO from Arbutus, he says this, we have seen no evidence of Moderna delivery system that is free from our intellectual property, not in their publications, their presentations, or in the examples in their patent filings. In our view, what they are reporting as theirs appears to be dominated by our intellectual property. Now, some people have said that this is going to if Arbutus here, it says, uh, has yet to sue for these royalties, but that they may be basically, uh, you know, do some royalties uh, if, you know, Moderna continues to use what is not theirs. So it said that back in July, that when this news came out initially, that the stock went up by 102%. So Arbutus stock went up 102%. So, so that should at least raise your interest a little bit. $2.50 micro cap company let's jump over and look at their financials let's see if they have anything going on for their financials and then if you want to stick around we'll go through their investor report so yes yes 191 million market cap enterprise value of 252 shares outstanding 80.91 million 
Which, so one thing when these biofarm companies, they run out of cash, you know, they're spending it all up in R&D and SG&A and, you know, they're not having any sales and they have waiting for all these drugs to get through all these phases to get approval. And, you know, it's a big cash burn and they run out of cash. So one thing that they do is you may have heard of the IPO. This is the initial public offering when a company goes from private to public. So when they do that, that's the IPO. But after that, when they run through all that money, what they like to do is an SEO. It's a seasoned equity offering. And basically one thing they like to do is what we see here. They run a deal with uh, Jeff who is their investment banker and basically they want to be able to put things on the shelf so put some shares on the shelf I mean get it meaning getting them approved but not issuing them yet so they they'd like to do they'd like the permission to issue them in the future but they don't want to do it right away so the first point here having an aggregate offering price of up to 50 million under the registration statement on the form s3 and the second point having the aggregate offering price of up to 125 million under one or more subsequent registration statements on form s-3 filed with the commission on the terms set forth in this agreement a statement from newswires which is just the same information but a little bit easier to understand as far as what we're looking at with a mixed shelf it says the securities which can be offered from time to time include common shares preferred shares warrants debt securities and units it says the net proceeds from the purposed offering will be used for general corporate purposes including working capital capital expenditures and r d expenditures it says that they've filed on friday and filled a registration statement covering uh, the potential sale of up to 200 million dollars in security so you know it's just basically operating expenses they're going to take some of that off the shelf they already had pre-approved put it into action and just keep the ball rolling so the good news continues as arbitus has been invited to participate in the hc wainwright annual global investment conference so it's a good time to meet with investors and you know the types of people venture capitalists and things like that so if you're still with me let's look at some of these valuation ratios so price per sales is the amount that you have to pay for a dollar of sales it's about $25 that you have to pay as an investor to get in on a dollar of sales price per tangible book $2.93 which is pretty good Given that it's trading about 260 currently while I'm making this video, it's been up much higher, up near $9, but um, it's dropped off. Very volatile for these small biotech firms. One year sales growth is 67%. Very nice. Very nice. One year EPS growth, negative 37%. Five year EPS growth, a lot of negative EPS growth, as you can see. Some of this information they don't have on Schwab, but all in all, like Schwab, negative operating profit margin, negative, 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 all the margins, negative cash flow, cash that they have on hand as a percent of current assets. So most of their current assets are in cash. Cash per share is decreasing, about $1.16 of cash and short term investments per share. Book value, in the share, 92 cents. Tangible book per share, 92 cents. Again, we're gonna have to pay over $2.50 for this stock currently. So current ratio, it's good. Good to see they're able to cover their short-term liabilities. Quick ratio, long-term debt. They don't have a lot of information on here for us for that long-term debt, so you might wanna go look that up. Negative ROI, management effectiveness, just a lot of negative numbers, you know, they really haven't hit it out of the ballpark. Let's jump over Let's jump over quickly and look at this report here. This is the corporate presentation, August 2020. So essentially what they're doing is they're they're focused primarily in the hepatitis B space. We'll look at some of the other charts. We see their CEO has worked for GSK before, and Gilead, Janssen, Pharmacet, Bristol Meyer. So some of their top leaders here, whoop, they had a little bit of trouble with their graphics, but uh, basically that they believe that there's a significant unmet medical need globally. So I like this chart. You have about 257 million chronic hepatitis B patients, but only 10.5% of those people have been diagnosed as having the disease. And from that, only 4.5 million are being treated. That's 1.8%. So you could see that they're thinking, hey, this is a huge market. There's a lot of people that have this disease and no one's really working on it. You know, very few people diagnosed and even less being treated. So you, you can look at this, there are three points, able to suppress the viral DNA, reduce or suppress viral antigens, and then block the HBSAG. So they say basically reawaken or boost the host immune response. Here's what they have in their pipeline. They have, looks like one drug here, phase one, 
Others are IND or earlier. So they're still in the proof of concept for a lot of these. So the rest of this report is really pretty technical. If you don't have a medical background, you're probably going to be lost. I'm certainly not sure exactly what they're talking about. And it's honestly not easy to pull from this presentation if they have any kind of business advantage, if their technology is any better than those of their competitors, which I haven't even really looked at. You know, I just thought it was interesting to see you know, in this time, in this space, as an investor looking at all that's going on with the vaccines and the treatments, you know, we know that there's going to be a lot of money involved in a global pandemic. Now, this may be a company that isn't really, really in the mix of this, but, you know, it may be a way to get in on some of the Moderna action, uh, maybe at a cheaper price. So at the end of this, I would say, you know, it's pretty technical to be able as a normal retail investor to be able to discern. Are they going to be able to do really well in some of their trials in the future? Obviously, that would be a long time away before you would see any big uptick from success in the hepatitis B space. I, mean, I hope that they are successful in everything that they do and they can really help patients and be a profitable company and do well. But the long and the short of it is, is there's going to be a lot of money with the Rona, with the vaccines, with the treatments. Everyone knows this. And this might be a way where you can get some exposure to Moderna where, or not just Moderna, also CureVac, maybe it might be a play where you could get some exposure to them, get some royalties, and you don't have to pay so much money per share in order to get into that. I don't know, but it definitely made the headlines. I'm just going to say this is going to get you started. If you're interested, you probably know if you're interested at this point or not. If you want to do more research on your own, that's all I have for you guys, but I sure appreciate you stopping by. I hope everything goes well. We're going to be doing more vaccine and more therapy companies in the future, but since this one had this interesting stuff come out in the news with this trial and their stock has done pretty well recently, uh, just on this news alone, I thought, huh, I said, let's see what's going on. So we'll talk to you guys next time.